I just pulled out my rear wheel from my Brompton. It is a Sturmey Archer SRF5 five-speed rear wheels. Um, I'm having a little bit of issues in climbing up the little slopes, and I'm going to see if I can give myself a good fix. Are you interested to learn how? Let's go. I am Petrelli. This is an All Things Brompton channel. If you're into Brompton, please consider subscribe to the channel. Okay, um, let me give you a bit of background. This wheel that I just pulled out from the back of my Brompton has been serving me for quite a while. It's a five-speed Sturmey Archer SR at five. It, it's got a five-speed internal gearing inside. So it's not a standard issue from the Brompton factory. Um, but, I, but I chose the five-speed internal hub for a particular reason. I like my bike to be very clean, so I choose this because it only got one shifting cables to go into the hub. Not like the usual six-speed, it got two cables to go in. After all, there are only a few gears that we're gonna shift, so why bother with so many cables, right? Anyway, so um, these settings that I have been riding with, it goes with the road in Singapore, where I used to ride a lot. Um, but since I moved to Brisbane, there are a lot of rolling hills. There are a lot of upslopes, downslope here. So I'm having a bit of difficult times when I'm riding up the slopes. Furthermore, I would like to do those beautiful climbs here as well. So I was thinking, what could I do to my bike to um, get it better working on the hills and slopes. So I was looking into the gearing options that I have. So my bike currently is having this 50T at the front and a 14T here at the rear end with the five gears internally can be switched. So uh, most of the time when I'm riding on the gentle slope, I'll be riding on the gear two. And if I'm on the flat, sometimes I can ride on gear three and I had never touched gear four and five. So they are kind of wasted to me. If the slope gets steeper, I'll be on gear one. So ideally, before I hit the big mount mountains, right, I will want at least one extra super low gear that helps me spin up to the hills. And when I'm riding on the normal flat, I will be on either gear three or gear four, leaving one for the faster ride. So basically, I have to shift down my entire gear range. How do we achieve that? So uh, I can either just like Every other Brompton riders, they switch from a 50T to a 44T, right? But I like to keep my 50T for the meantime. I have actually know what size of uh, chain ring that I need. I know a 42T would perfectly fit my current fitness, but 42 is like a odd size of chain ring. You have to, I, I mean, I, I already asked the factory to custom make me one already. But before it arrives, I still want to keep my ride go going. So the other day when I was working on the other vlog, uh, I had picked up this 18T rear sparklet. So um, I was working on the gear ratio mathematical calculations. It turns out the 18T would work quite fine with my 50T chain ring in front. These combinations could turn out to be the gear ratio that I wanted it. So you must be asking, what is it with the gear ratio? Let me put this down first. Okay, so the gear ratio composite of um, two parts. So we have we have the chain ring, the front crank chain ring, and we have the rear sparklet. Let's just say we have this 50T chain ring at the crank, and we have this 14T rear sparklet here. The gear ratio is your T on your front crank, 50 in, the, in, in our case, divided by the amount of T on your sparklet. So in our case, we are sampling as 14. So you, when you put the 50 divided by 14, you will get a number of 3.57. This 3.57 is the gear ratio. Okay, so what is it with this 3.57 number? This 3.57 number gear ratio means uh, when you rotate the front chain ring once, this gear ratio tells how many times your rear wheel actually rotate. So in our case of 3.57, your front chain ring will rotate one time, your crank rotation one time, your rear wheel will actually rotate 3.57 times. So when the gear ratio is low, uh, that means your front crank rotation would cost less rotation on the rear wheel. This is good for when you're going up the hill. 
it's easier for you to go up the hill. When the gear ratio number is very, very large, uh, that could be ideal when you want to ride the bike very, very fast. Let me pop up this spreadsheet number for you. You see, I'm having these calculations based on the 50T chain ring, and the rear end, I put in a calculation on the 14 and 18T. On the second gear, uh, if I put the 14T, it's 2.68, the gear ratio. But if I change to the 18, my third gear, will be become 2.78, which is like about 4% more. So if you look at the lower end of the 18T, I have a 1.74. So when you compare with the 2.24 gear ratio, I'm having a much lower gear to ride with. That means it's easier for me to go up to the slope and even to the bigger hills now. My life is going to be so much better. So are you guys having difficulties with your gearing? Uh, is it too hard for you to pedal, too easy for, for you to pedal? You might just need to find out what you really need. If you guys are having issues, state it down in the comment. Uh, I can explain more to you on how to modify your chain ring or even a rear spocklet to make your rides feel much easier for your, your own fitness. Um, so for now, I'm going to put um, I'm going to install my little 18T spocklet to my, to my rear wheel and tomorrow I'll be heading out for a ride. So that's it for today. I hope you guys did pick up something and I don't make a mess out of explaining it. So for the meantime, I should see you tomorrow. Dash! Okay, let's pop that spotlight out. Damn, the chain is too sharp.